obviously we're not here for fishing. We're here for repairs. Swim's falling apart. Some lovely fishing here though. Holbridge Lake, Prittlewell and District Angling Club. We're here to finish off our swim building and bank repairs. It's a really nice lake. This one we did last time. Returned to finish off what we started. Here's one we did before. We put this in a year ago. It's nice and maintained. They've topped it off with a nice bit of chipping, solid. It's not moving, is it? it? Looks good. Nice and neat. Nothing to catch on. These were terrible before, but that's nice. That's weathered in nicely. That. Even pleased with that. This one's all right. It's not a bit of weeding, but yeah, they're good. They've Settled in nicely. Plants are taken. I'm happy with them. Safe, simple fishing platforms. always add stuff to the tops but we try and get them as neat as we can we've built these a year ago you build them on a flat level make them level obviously spirit level etc build them on on flat clay put the returns in that's the bit people don't do they'll just bodger a bit of the front and then they wonder why it all caves in around the edges so you plant right up to the edge put these are double returns so underneath there are two sleepers deep and two returns going that way into the bank, that's all you need. You can put a stopper on or a bumper, whatever you want to call it. Disabled access, make them harder, but basically that's how I like to build swims. It just keeps it really simple, strong, biggest, you know, nice and decent size, and flat and level so it's safe. And that's all there is to it, really. Dave reckons he can get that round without it collapsing. <laughs> it's a hefty stack. You can see these swims are quite uh, delicate. Dave so just put his foot through that. Only a matter of time before they completely go. So it's just a cavern under there, there's nothing under there. So we're here to make them a bit more like this. Safe. on now. I really like this lake. It's just a really nice mature old pit club water. Mega cheap fishing. Plenty of fish. Loads of fish in here. The problem is, as with a lot of club waters, they try and make it all things to all people and as a pleasure fishery, it works really well. As a cart fishery, it would work really well. As a match venue, waste of time. Honestly, you could spend 20 grand on fish, waste of time as a match venue. It'll always have its days, you know, there'll be days when the fish are feeding and they're not hiding in the lilies from the cormorants and they're not being put under too much stress, that, that, that it will fish its head off. Pleasure fishing, it's like all these places we go where the pleasure fishing's great, as soon as I have a match, it's crap. Unfortunately, if you want a match lake, 
dig it like a match lake. Dig it very, very shallow, boring, you know, uniform, so the fish move around. If that's the sort of fishing you want, that's what you should be doing. You know, I don't like these snake lakes and these donut things with just like a canal because there's very little water and then they overstock them with fish. So these swim things are really good because it claps at the front. You've got to play to your strengths. Lake like it's beautiful, it's a lovely lake, it's got loads going for it. And we see this time and time again where it ends up being the club that are their own worst enemy, you know. <laughs> there's, there's nothing wrong with this lake, it's great. Yeah, it takes work. All right, they've paid us to do some swim building and they uh, put some dye in and stuff. It's full of carp. All right, these carp are quite old and some of the mouths aren't great, but there's some good fish in here. There's some quality fish in here. Some tench, bream, silvers, lilies, bit of weed, you know. At different times of year, yeah, it gets bad, but it's the, it's the match anglers at the moment. You don't hear carp anglers whinging about, you know, oh, should we put more, more carp in? Very seldom you do anyway. Only the ones that really struggle to catch. But it's always when you can't catch a hundred pound. That's when your arguments start within the committee. Oh, we should buy F ones. Oh, we should buy more silvers. Oh, we should do this. Oh, we should do that. It's so, like, well, hang on, the lake's not suitable for that anyway. So you're going to be wasting money. And people say, oh, why are we building swims when we could be buying fish? Why are we doing planting when we could be buying fish? Why are we doing X Y? It's like, come on, guys. It's like dealing with children a lot of the time. And they're a very silent minority. They're very vocal until it comes to getting things done. Every club in the country has got this nucleus of people who are against any change, any improvement, because it doesn't suit their particular needs on that particular day. And it's very, very frustrating. And it's everywhere. You know, we're lucky. We work all over the country and, and we see it everywhere. You know, there's a lot of good clubs. Most clubs are decent, you know what I mean? They've got cracking waters like this at their disposal. A lot of them own them, not rent them. But so many of them aren't reaching their potential. And it's not about turning them all into carp waters at all. You know, this works very, very well as a pleasure fishery. But it's when the match fraternity start kicking off and going oh we need this because we can't catch oh we need this we want to put in this because oh it'll all and it's all about their agenda to catch more silver fish all the time it's like well there's plenty of silver fish in here and yes everyone's dealing with cormorants and otters and warmer summers and warmer winters and algae low oxygen which is all part and parcel of running a fishery really but you've got to be realistic and if a club committee is taking advice from you know, a small band of merry, often not the greatest anglers in the world, just demanding more fish get put in the lakes. But yeah, of course you can put more fish in the lakes. You can do that any time. Everyone's got tons of fish. Everyone's very willing to sell you tons of fish. But is it going to achieve anything? Is it going to give you those extra pounds in the matches? No. Will it in the short term? Very possibly. But it's just not going to achieve what you want it to achieve in the long term it just doesn't happen more often than not anyway we've seen time and time again when a club even when we've netted the lake for them and we've said look you've got so many fish if you put more fish in you're going to risk the you know risk your stocks risk your valuable stocks and they go ahead and do it anyway because uh, they've agreed at a committee it's always that it's like we agreed at a committee meeting we were going to do this this year it's like well it doesn't morning hair lovely i mean my hair's always great in the afternoon um so yeah these things it is a bugbear of mine but always at the same time it's why I love the job because we see changes in a lot of waters where you know you can try and persuade them look this isn't the best way to develop it if you're just going to continually fill it full of fish what's it going to achieve and in the long term yeah we get loads of lakes that are really heavily stocked with fish um, and they do fine but you shouldn't be restocking freshening up your stock every year because that to me is a sign of poor management. It's a sign that, you know, like, like I say, with cormorant predation, yes, there's an argument that you might have to restock occasionally with smaller fish, but there's so many other things you can do rather than just keep spending money on fish. And 10 grand on fish doesn't get you very far. You know, 10 grand on radial work and planting and doing things that are benefiting the long term of your fishery goes a lot longer than a few fish. So it's worth bearing all that in mind, but it's match angling on club waters where it's very very difficult you know a lot of clubs would be better off the sort of money they spend every year on fish trying to rent a little tiny pond and 
and, and, or, or, or even buying a little parcel and, and doing it themselves and digging a small little very uniform little pond and, and then putting loads of fish in it so that there's no features and if you want that sort of sterile environment create it it's easy enough we've done it before for, for clients and, and it works and then the fishing's very easy it's very consistent and the match anglers are happy but they're not happy because they'll go they'll want to fish on lakes like this but then they'll want to catch 100 pound a day it's like it's not that sort of lake and you can just keep continually putting fish in it it won't be that sort of lake that it's just not it's it's a perfectly balanced um club water good pleasure fishing it could be a great you know you could obviously make it a, a, a wonderful sort of exclusive venue or whatever but it's a club water and it, it has been and it will be as far as i can see and it's it's great you know it's, it's, it looks better now than it has done. We're finishing up the swims this week. There's always more work to do. There's always work to do. Anyone who sits back and goes, oh, that's right, it's all done. Utter nonsense. But it's nice. And it just bugs me when it seems to be the few ruin it for the many. But that's the same in every walk of life, I suppose, isn't it? But there we are. It's 8 o'clock. I better go to work again. Get back in the digger. Ruin this one as well. So there was a swim and the swim ended where Matt started and the reason we had to take it out and redo it is because it was just collapsing basically. Matt will show you the undercut even now of taking it back. Look how far we can get that post under there. <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's still going back that far. Now eventually that's just going to collapse and we've seen it happen time and time again at various different venues. So it's important to get right so unfortunately I'm going to have to collapse that and put it right. We've got plenty of spoil here you don't do that and don't identify then you're basically building a swim where it's going to subside and it's eventually going to collapse and you're wasting your time so you've got to put those undercuts right um, if you don't you're asking for trouble so it does mean make it a bit of a mess it does mean take it you know it takes a bit longer to build a swim but it's got to be done right if you don't do it it will collapse there's no way it won't collapse it goes right under there so we've addressed most of it down here this is back to back to hard clay now we'll have to collapse that bank and then redo it and then build a swim on top of it otherwise you're wasting your time so we bit the bullet rip the whole thing out it had to come out there's no two ways about it it was hollow underneath really really hollow you could jump up and down on it and you put your foot for it which we did so we've now ripped it all out taken it back to clay dropped the original old sleeper in as a support because it's quite deep down there those holes are in further in the ground and they are sticking out of the ground so it's all about building a foundation solid bait like, like everything in life build a solid base and i'm going to curve this bank round more grade this bank take a couple of these wispy trees out and then these others will do better anyway so yeah it's taken a while um, but it's worth doing because it's going to be a lovely swim now So we've completely rebuilt the bank. Always important to put a return in, so we've dug out the bank. That's hard down there now. This is awesome, it's gonna be safe. <laughs> Bigger than it was before. A lot, lot safer than it was before. Straight back on hard bank now. So it's all good. <laughs> so now this is all blended into this bank. We've got nice steps down into it. You could put Bivy down here now, not all these old fellas will. Now the difference, main difference is how stable it is before when you were standing here. This is all undercut, all of it, back to here basically, because the swim was out here. So we've brought it back, which you have to do. You're wasting your time trying to keep backfilling. If you want to keep it out here, you just go, no, we'll reshape the bank. Because if you keep doing it, you can just keep backfilling with rubble and you'll do it's a fucking waste of time to be honest. So you sacrifice a bit of the, I mean it was built out originally, now there's two sleepers under there, level, flat, on clay, built up properly. I don't like using metal but these posts have to be put in and they're in the ground, easy 12 foot. And that's it. Cut back to the bank, we'll put a handrail up there for the old boys on the stairs. Lovely job. cleared this corner last time we were here, you couldn't fish at all in this whole bay. That big 
massive tree was in there, falling in, it wasn't required to come out. This will be all planted up. So now you can fish in here and redoing this swim, which is all slid into the lake. We're rebuilding this today. We'll go over there and carry along that bank. Right, so people are asking us how we do it start to finish. So this one here, it was sloping down at a horrible angle anyway, so it looked all right. But as soon as you get in there, yep, the difference is what we're doing, we get in the water. So as soon as you get in the watery waders, you can feel the undercuts. If you're just doing it from the bank, you wouldn't bother. You just, you wouldn't know. You can feel a bit with the bucket, but the lads get in every time, suss out what's going on with the undercuts. You can get a leg under it, you've got to get it out. Otherwise, what's the point? Because you're just going to bodge it together. It's only going to last a year or two, and then you'll be doing the same job again. So we've brought that swim back about two, maybe, maybe up to two feet, but now, that's all clear. There's a lot of root under there, a lot of backfill material from years ago, a lot of big bits of root and stuff, but that's all gone now. So now that is a chamfered, decent front, and then we'll build on top of it. So we'll, we'll change a bucket, and then we, we don't build in the water, because then you're backfilling all the time. So you, uh, you'll you see, I'll do it in state. Once that's level, you get good returns set in. That's on level hard solid clay. Put a double in here because it was a double. We have to take this tree out because it's dangerous. That would have easily collapsed. And the roots are just rotting anyway. Stone, uh, picking the, as much as sticks and the roots out is very important. Otherwise, they just rot inside and yeah, get them out. And then um, the big bits of clay in a pile there and then when we've finished we well when we're ready to fill it in we put the big bits of clay at the very front and pack it all in so it's solid back to solid clay and then you're not really backfilling you're just moving the spoil that you've removed back into it you could muck about and put a bloody liner in it and all that but to be fair I just line it with clay and it, you know it's just maintenance either picking the weeds off or you do it properly and line it with if it's clay based and then you just put loads and loads of stone or like this topsoil and stuff back on it you can some people grass them over they look really nice i say it doesn't have to look i don't want to build platforms and build out in the water i don't want to put decking in unless you have to i just want something stable flat level place to fish safe and simple really that's going to last and that's what we're doing couple of bees down here. Matt's allergic to bees, there's a few bees about. And Dave's miles away, he's hiding over there. Why have you got to do scared of bees? So this highlights the problem with the old swim. The old swim was out where Matt's knee is, and obviously there was a big crater in here where they'd put stuff that didn't need to be there. And not everything can move under there, apart from solid clay. If it's solid clay, it's good. So we're gonna to have to take, because of that hole now, because there was about half a sleeper in there and had a metal which just didn't need to be in there, wasn't really doing much. I've obviously had to get rid of that to push it down so that's back on neat clay whereas you know up to here we could have built it on there but now I've got to bring it back a foot if you try and build it across there just to get an extra bit out into the water and backfill this hole it'll always be a weak point and it'll eventually you, everyone's been to swims on fisheries where oh they look great on day one and then on, a year later there's craters in the front well that's what we don't want and that's why we do it like this so you're, you're trying to build back onto a level base always no undercuts you can only do that by having a guy in the water finding out what's going on and then you build it back build it on top people say oh what about erosion it doesn't matter because you smooth the front off there's loads you can do to prevent that it's all about getting the base right but then you find stuff like this halfway i mean there was, there was two foot of bank in front of that which is all collapsing and this is part of the reason people just bang posting like there's no tomorrow and now we've got to get that post out and even if you lift it out clean it's, well, there's a lot of gravel and shit around it, so it just weakens the bank even more. So we just have to keep taking it back. We can grade the bank back, it's just a pain in the arse. 
people make it so complicated, it doesn't need to be. This is why you have to be careful about your trees, because obviously there's a swim there, and there's a tree there. And that came down not long ago, I'd have thought. And if someone was fishing there when that happened, that would have took them out. The senior citizen probably knocked them in the pond. He's have to do some serious damage, so that's just going to come out now. And obviously as a result of that, it's never about taking all the trees out, it's about re removing trees. I mean these ones, we've took one out there last year, this one's now looking a lot more vibrant. Took two little ones out here. These ones are starting to get, this one had no leaves on last time. You know, you've got to be sensible. I want trees around lakes, believe you me. But I don't want them to be A, dangerous, B, causing problems with water quality, etc. And C, if you're digging a brand new lake, you've got the perfect opportunity to sensibly, it's like, like everything, it's like with your stock. It's easy, oh yeah, put thousands of fish in, same as ours, put thousands of trees around it. It's like, well, no, is it, there's not something, there's only so much space, there's only so much light, etc. And the, the longer you leave things before you realise that, you, you're going back and making more work for yourself. So it all comes down to planning and being sensible. So I mean, you couldn't, that was non, you couldn't fish that area before. There was a huge, great fallen tree in this bay, and it was black and dark in there. Now, when the sun goes over there, obviously the sun shines on here, it's absolutely fine, but it, you couldn't fish it. It was unfishable. All this whole area from here to there was unfishable. Now, it's nice. You've got these nice, nice pads. Double swim there now. You know, that can be planted now. So, yeah, it's all good. The first week we did here, you came in here, you couldn't fish this swim. You couldn't fish a lot of the swims actually. I mean, there's fish full of fish in here now. But um, yeah, this corner was void, dead. Yeah, mate. Um, just stuff in the water that used to be here, leaning over, blah, blah, blah. Um, and again, you know, the trees that you leave behind do better. They really do. Look at that little young one there. He was getting no light before. He's doing really well now. Probably blossom on here. But yeah, you couldn't fish in here. I'm gonna fish love it in there now. So yeah, get them done, get the swims in. Just, uh, obviously, well, that's been in there a year. It's up to the club to keep them strimmed and stuff. Same here, they were just overgrown. Just just all this, which is we see all the time. And oh, leave it, yeah, leave it. All right, go on then. But then you just find all tackle in the trees. And, an ongoing thing. This one took this big bow off this tree because it was leaning over. Did this yesterday. Big double swim. It's just been grass seeded now. And again, they were really undermined. There's a video somewhere of us getting that. There's a huge, great big tree root in there. And this is ideal now. You plant in there. Just plant all in there. It's all nice and soft. That'll be lovely. They'll do well in there. Our little friends are ducks, we've been following us around all week. So that's a flat, they're all very level, spirit level level. Which is great, and I'll show you some more around here. Obviously this will be raked before we go. So it looks like we've just put the fronts on and buried nothing really, but what's underneath there, now I do keep going on about it. Full length returns on there, double depth, full length returns, and that's in solid clay. So whilst people will say, oh, it will undermark, you know, it'll fall apart. It would if, if there was roots under there and rubble, which there was. <laughs> endless rubble, endless angle irons, endless bit greenhouse. Someone someone admitted to us, oh yeah, it's where we used to bring all our old crap. Dumped greenhouse in there. You've got to remove all, that's not you've got to remove all that stuff first. And if you get back on solid clay, it's sound. So then it just, you can get it nice here, nice and level. And there's all the spoil, a lot of the spoil has been pushed in the front, made sure there's nothing in the, in the front of the swim, uh, and then shored up. So there's no undercut at all. And that is how you get it to work and last. And then you come around here, obviously, you know, you go to some places, or if you're building swims from brand new, it takes no time at all. Some This one took the best part of the day, because it was horrendous. And the second you start with the digger, you got to dig it out. So we had to take this bank down, put steps into here and completely regrade it. But it's a popular part of the lake. And now it's pucker. That's flat, level, hard. That's the difference. None of that's gonna move. 
that topsoil will settle down an inch. It rains a few times, but I'll put a handrail up here for the old boys. When we did this next one, this one actually isn't finished. This needs, we haven't done this. We just made it safe that the front needs sorting out, but that's a day getting in there. When we did this, this again, it was all overhanging. It was a bit of dead water really. And someone fished that a couple of, well, shortly after, I don't know how, how long after, and they caught loads and loads of bream. But you don't, the anglers tend to moan about not catching rather than tell us what they did catch. Nice fully scaled carp there. Loads of carp in here. These are the ones we did last year. They just like to say once we leave, they just want topping and sorting out. They're all flat and level. These are the three this side we've done. Again, big returns. They're all double sleeper. Back to the bank. Just simple. They're all secured. And that's it. Simple as. Flat and level. You can put another sleeper on top if you want, but we like them. So eventually you'll be able to just run the mower over here. It's all about making it easy for yourselves. So this will all seed up nicely. Again, flat and level. Obviously it looks rubbish now, but uh, get a lot of that. Oh, you ruined it. It's like, okay, well you don't go into someone who's renovating a house and tell them how shit they've done when they've just ripped the staircase out, do you? Wait until they put a new one in. So yeah, there we are. Like I say, they weather really nice. And you can either leave them like this just to grow over run a mower over them you can weed them and it, yeah you can put membrane underneath i never do because if you ever want to replace a sleeper not that you ever need to really i mean we've had sleepers in the ground for 15 16 18 years going back to swims and they're still there this is a damn wall now we wanted to do these as well with fish everywhere um but the club are worried that if we disturb this bank the lake will leak personally i don't agree at all it's all clay but they've gone to great expense years gone by and put all these posts in they were all around the lake i mean how much that cost i don't know it's cracking late though it's loads of silverfish in front of them ducks topping There's loads of bream in here loads of carp i do like it the more time you spend down here it's just got everything really so yeah that's what we've been doing pretty much all the pet well all the pegs look the same now apart from the ones we can't get access to but yeah they look good this little duckling has been following us around he's on his own his mates around the corner he's been following us around the whole time he loves it wherever we go he goes So again in this one we've had to rebuild the bank. The bank, well you say the bank, the old swim was out here but this is all just nothing under here. Absolutely nothing. And the front was dipped at that angle. And it was, there was a couple of holes in it as well. A bit like one over there. It just starts to get craters and once they start it just ends up. If you look on previous videos I think there's one in the Isle of Wight where there's a hole in one of the swims and they just keep getting worse. And now we've rebuilt, took it back. Like I say sometimes you have to sacrifice a bit of bank. And, and the people who say, oh, we haven't got much, you know, if your boundaries here, then you've got to build the swims right in the first place, because if you don't, and you bodge them, and then you get erosion, you've had it, if that's your boundary. So all these things are worth bearing in mind, but these have got full length returns, double full length returns on. That front has been completely chamfered, hard clay, there's no shit in there, no roots in there at all. It's a hell of a lot of angle line along here, and just a load of crap. So that's now happy days safely fish this pig. Have a party on there. It's done. It's a Friday now. The more time I spend on the lake, I like it a lot. Could be something quite special really. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I think we've done well. Got a lot of brand new safe swims. Tidy up the banks as much as we can wherever we can get the digger to and wherever the boys can get in. 
sort it out, so it's gone rather well. This is the last one we're finishing today. And we're all done. A bit tight in here, <laughs> had to make my way in. But uh, I'm sure the anglers appreciate it. Some of them will. <laughs>